Now it's time for the asteroid roundup. And I know, it's just disgusting. Um, <laughs> yes. I heard a couple of them. If you said it kind of early-ish, you could get a prize. We're very loose with the prizes around here. But those legs on those asteroids are just too much for me. Um, so, but uh, this is the story of two asteroids, uh, Ryugu on the left and Bennu on the right. And these two are in the news a lot lately because there are two spacecraft visiting them, uh, Hayabusa 2 on the left and OSIRIS-REx on the right. So here are the pictures of the two spacecraft, and just so you can keep them straight in your mind, Hayabusa 2 is a Japanese mission. They're both sample return missions, meaning they're both picking up um, material and bringing it back to Earth. The, Hayabusa 2 return will be in December of next year, and Osiris Rex will be returning sample in 2023. So their two respective uh, uh, asteroids are actually quite similar. Um, Bennu is about half the size of Ryugu. They're both carbonaceous, meaning they have carbon in them, and it's believed that the carbon that is prevalent in carbonaceous uh, asteroids is the same carbon that is in all of us. In other words, we humans and all life on Earth is made uh, very significantly of carbon. And uh, so carbon was present when the solar system was forming. So when you find these asteroids that have the carbon in them, they're the kind that are really essential for life to have formed on Earth. Um, both of them are Earth crossing. And in fact, Bennu has a one in 2,700 chance of hitting Earth in the second half of the 22nd century. Yay! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yay? Well, that's pretty far off. I know. So anyway, but this is important. I mean, not only is there a lot of interesting science here, but then we got to know what these things are because they 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 pose a risk to us. We don't want to become like the dinosaurs, and so it's really smart to go learn about these things and learn um, maybe then what we might be able to do to prevent a uh, catastrophe on Earth. Okay, so those are the two missions, Hayabusa 2 and OSIRIS-REx, and they're in the news a lot. We'll start with Hayabusa 2. <coughs> and this is an image of Ryugu taken oh. by Hayabusa. I know, isn't it gorgeous? Very rocky uh, surface, and um, it's got that characteristic diamond shape of those kinds of somewhat fast-spinning asteroids, but just a very beautiful mission uh, uh, image taken by that mission. This is the mission, if you were here last year, that had the little hoppers that were hopping along the surface. That's the same mission. But uh, since then, in this past month, it's done two things that were kind of exciting. Actually, just at the time of the last show, they always time their exciting stuff right at showtime. Um, this is an, an image, a shadow of Hayabusa 2 on the surface of Ryugu. And you see that dark splotch there on the surface? That's where it dropped down a little instrument that kicked up a bunch of dust and collected some of that dust as part of the sample return. So it took its first sample, and if you haven't seen this, it's almost too much to believe, but that's, there it goes. And see all the debris that it kicked up? And some of it went into the little collector and is coming back to Earth in 2020. That's real. That's real. That, isn't that a great question? That's real? It's real. And um, so then another, they did an image processing where now instead of watching, I mean, that had the camera go down with it, but now if you were riding along with it, this is what it looks like, a little bigger, a little slower so you can see. Boom. There's wow. Isn't that amazing? So uh, today also, and I'm not going to read you all these, just to show you that Hayabusa tweeted up a storm overnight because it took another zoom in to the surface, and here are its pictures as it went up close. And then it released this lovely little thing um, that is set off a, an impactor on the surface to have a little detonation. And the reason they did that is that last sample that you saw was taking stuff off the surface. But they want to excavate down and take a sample from inside. So right now, all this did was not collect a sample, but go and kind of blast off a little, blast off the surface stuff so it could excavate up some of the under stuff. So the space, I mean, the engineering for this is unbelievable. The spacecraft actually went around to the other side to stay safe, but it had a little remote camera that took a picture, and this was released today. There it is. Can you see it? 
right there. So that is the impact site. They believe that it uh, was successful. I'll go back and circle it so you can see again that it was successful. Um, all the data suggests that it was successful in scooping out some of the under insides of, uh, of Ryugu, ready for some future time to go back and get a sample of this stuff, which is the inside stuff. Yeah. Isn't the, 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 the explosive, isn't that going to contaminate the area? They made it all of copper. So you, when they see the copper, then yes, you'll know the copper came from the explosive. But uh, they don't expect to find copper native here, so you can always tell. And on to the other mission, OSIRIS-REx. This is the United States mission. That's to Bennu. It's mapped out Bennu completely. Those are the four sides of Bennu. This was um, taken from imagery. This was just released today from laser uh, altimetry. And you can see, again, that characteristic diamond shape of a fast-spinning asteroid. They both have that shape. What's kind of cool is that, just to think about it, OSIRIS-REx is only a little over a kilometer above the surface. Um, Bennu is so low mass that to be in orbit around it, it's very close to the surface. It's, I mean, it's kind of crazy to think about. And I like the comparison with the mallard duck right above it. <laughs> a mallard duck would fly much, much higher than OSIRIS-REx is, is over the surface. So from that vantage point, this is what it's seeing, a real rubble pile. And uh, so rocky and so um, the boulders are so big, they did not expect this. It was not predicted based on the, what they call the thermal inertia, how, how quickly things warm up and cool down, um, and the imagery, the brightness. They thought it would be a whole lot smoother and a lot easier to land. So now they're having to rethink their plan. Where can they find a spot that's smooth enough that the spacecraft can get down there and get its sample? So there are four uh, potential targets in the little squares there, and you can see that you know, it's kind of less rocky right there. <laughs> so that's what they're trying to figure out where they're going to land to get their sample. But they have more time to figure all that out. Um, the, yeah. I'm very puzzled about the fact that there must be very low gravity on these uh, bodies. So what is keeping the gravel, the screen in place? It's uh, the question, and this is a great question, we'll come to it. Um, in fact, it's kind of part of this picture because, yes, the porosity <laughs> is about 50%. In other words, it's as much voids as it is rocks when you do the, figure out the density of the, of the thing. And so it has to be quite porous. Um, there is some gravity, it's holding itself together, but as it spins up faster, in fact, you can lose um, some particles to space, and that is going on at a, at a slow rate, but it is still going on. So it doesn't keep all of its rubble together. Some of the rubble does go off. And certainly um, when, you know, like in the case of Ryugu, some of that stuff was launched into escape velocities and we'll, we'll leave Ryugu forever. And this was unexpected too before yeah. the mission, right? Yeah. Some of the, uh, both of those were listed as carbonaceous asteroids, but one was type B and one was type G. What's the difference? Uh, thank you for noticing. Let's see. Uh, B is, I meant that sincerely. Oh, thanks for um, uh, the, the B ones, I think I have this right. The B ones have slightly different, uh, uh, slightly bluer colors and are thought to have a little more silicates, I think it is, that causes that. And the G type is, uh, has a, a strong absorption band in the ultraviolet. And I don't know what the cause of the absorption band is. But, but they're basically the same spectrum, basically made from the same stuff, but have slightly different features. So they give them these G type and B type, but primarily and fundamentally they're carbonaceous or otherwise known as C type, as opposed to like metallic or uh, rocky. Um, OK, moving on, guess what? Uh, they put out this stereo image. And uh, so it's time to, once again, all right, lights. All right, that's working. Yeah, that does work. <clears throat> yeah, so that big feature, I should have shown it. Um, I'm going to go back. See that rock? I know. Blah. See the rock coming around at the bottom there? It's disappearing, coming back, disappearing. Yep. That's what we're looking at, is that big rock. How big is that? Oh, brother. I, I'm sorry that I don't have that off the top of my head. That should be easily Googleable when you get home. So um, in honor of the person who made this, uh, there he is. 
<laughs> Brian May, once again, uh, he actually is part of that imaging team. And so uh, he made those. <laughs> and here, there he is wearing a Freddie Mercury t-shirt. So he is very interested in 3D. Yes, he does. So those are images from a website of his. So you can take them off again. <laughs> so would Bennu be essentially less cohesive as, as than, say, a rock pile or a pile of gravel? Uh, they refer to them as rubble piles, and but they they do have some self gravity. But if they spin up, and this will come into play in a minute, um, they can start spinning so fast that they really lose a lot of stuff. And that is, in fact, what we're seeing here <clears throat> in this astronaut called astronaut <laughs> asteroid <laughs> called Galt. It uh, was actually discovered a couple of months ago to have this one tail coming off of it. I know you see two, because now there are two tails coming off of it. And this asteroid is thought to be going through that process, um, which if you might have heard it called a YORP effect, uh, which stands each the Y-O-R-P, are initials of the first names for all the four scientists who worked on this idea. <clears throat> but it's that uh, radiation hits the asteroid, starts, uh, heat, heats it up, and stuff sputters off. And that sputtering off changes the angular momentum of it, and it spins the asteroid up. And uh, so <clears throat> that's not what we saw on that one. was just a little tiny sputtering. Not the, it's not at breakup speed yet. I think the magic number is two-hour uh, two revolution. And it's at a four-hour revolution right now. <laughs> 